What's up gamers, Cryptico here, and welcome back to Lowering the Mark, a show where I analyze the current and former world records of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe time trial runs to see how these records get faster over time. We'll look at elements such as the loadout, racing lines, and mushroom usage to better understand what's bringing these times down. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell to be the first to know when my videos go live. For today's episode, we're jumping back over to the retro side and taking a look at one of the classics at its fastest speed. GBA Mario Circuit at 200cc. On May 9th, 2017, the world record for this run was set at 1 minute 3.617 seconds by the American player Matt. Fast forward to over 4 years later on May 31st, 2021, and we see the record now sits at 59.968 seconds thanks to the Dutch player Stir. That's a 3.6 second improvement between records and an impressive 5.7% faster time. Our former world record holder Matt has broken 5 world records on this course only and has only spent 4 days holding at least 1 world record. Our current world record holder Stir has broken nearly 250 world records across 14 unique runs and just reached his 1300th day holding at least 1 of his 8 current world records. At pre-release, the world record was 9 seconds away from 1 minute and it quickly got closer to that mark thanks to players such as StarkSelX, Jimmy, and Matt. Once Kevin took it down to 102, he brought the record down by a few more tenths before FLC took over. Then Cinda would be the one to get the next second break. Now into 101 territory, Kevin came back and battled with Jimmy and Stir as he brought the record all the way down to a 101.3, but unfortunately it wouldn't last that long as the top time. Stir stepped up, and in the middle of dropping 10 consecutive world records, dipped under 101 and was now less than a second away from an epic sub. After two separate records that each lasted for over 300 days, ARMY stepped in and stopped this reign before it got one day longer. One day later, Stir responded with 15 consecutive world records that ended with the prized minute break as he went 59.9 in May of 2021. In total, the record was broken 77 times by 17 different players. The loadouts here have a similar theme, but one does it better than the other in terms of performance. Matt goes with the combo of Dry Bowser, driving the Splat Buggy with the Slim Wheels and the Super Glider. Stir goes with the much better combo of Waluigi, driving the Wild Wiggler with the Leaf Tires and the Paper Glider. Just gonna cut the theatrics here. Matt has a higher top speed stat, but falls off in the important ones such as Acceleration, Handling, Grip, and Mini Turbo. His loadout just isn't on the level it needs to be to go under a minute. But Stir definitely has the performance stats in his favor, and it proved useful as he was actually able to go under one minute. This course is one of my favorite retro ones only because of how simple it is. I appreciate a course that's all about how well you handle the cart. Any course that feels like a proper F1 course is a course that I enjoy. Now let's watch our racers break some records. Just a heads up, some of these sections are incredibly short so some of the explanations might be a little broad. Matt hits a rocket start out of the gate and uses his first mushroom to cut out the first turn and then chains a normal mini turbo before heading onto the ramp. Alberto does the exact same thing, but on a better line with a slightly longer lasting mini turbo. Not much difference here, but to be fair, there really isn't a better way to start off this race, so it makes sense that we saw this from both players. After 4 seconds of driving, Stir leads by nearly 4 tenths of a second going into S2. After hitting the jump boost, Matt goes wide then cuts inside for this super mini turbo around the hairpin. After hitting the left zipper, he drifts off the zipper ramp and carries that up until this next turn where he starts the next drift he'll continue into S3. Stir also grabs the jump boost and wide to tight drift for the super mini turbo. He'll skip the zipper and drift off the ramp for that same super mini turbo that Matt got before starting his next drift into S3. Not much looked different there, but Stir built on his lead mainly because of the longer lasting mini turbo and by going on a more direct line off the ramp into that next turn. His lead now sits at over 6 tenths of a second going into S3. Matt finishes the super mini turbo around this long turn and heads down the slalom. To close out the lap, he'll charge up this long mini turbo and use it to hop over these tires to cut the last turn out. He hops a bit and then starts drifting before he reaches the finish line. Stir gets the same super mini turbo around this turn and also goes for the tire hop near the end, but he actually gets the super mini turbo as he cuts out this turn and rides the extended boost to the finish line. That right there was the main reason why his lead jumped up to where it is now. 
he's up on Matt by over 8 tenths of a second after lap 1. Matt goes for the same mushroom cut that we saw on lap 1, but actually grabs a mini turbo from it this time and chains that with another mini turbo before reaching the ramp at the end of the section. Stir does something a little different. He carries his drift up until the grass and uses that mini turbo to no item this shortcut we just saw Matt use a mushroom for, after which he'll grab the same quick mini turbo and head on to the ramp. What's important to note here is that his lead did drop off by a tenth, but now he has that mushroom to use somewhere else further along the run. Stir now leads by 7 tenths of a second at the end of lap 1. Fresh off the jump boost, Matt goes for a similar wide to tight turn before hitting the zipper and drifting off the next ramp. One super mini turbo later, he goes to the inside on this wide turn to close out S2. After Stir's jump boost, he goes for an even tighter turn by carrying the super mini turbo through the grass and virtually loses no speed. He'll drift off the zipper ramp, and after his super mini turbo, he'll use his second mushroom to cut out this wide turn. This is definitely a good place to use it as it cuts more out of the actual area of driving than anywhere else you can't already hit with a no item shortcut. That probably sounds confusing and it definitely is, but what's important here is that Stir regained any amount of time he lost with interest as his lead now sits at over 1.1 seconds at the end of S2. Through S3, both racers come out of that turn with a super mini turbo then make their way through the slalom for that tire hop shortcut. They both enter at around the same spot, but since Stir has the much better mini turbo stat, he was able to charge up a super one in the same time it took Matt to charge up a normal one. They both make the hop and ride on down to the finish line and start drifting before finishing lap 2. With Stir taking two major shortcuts, he's nearly doubled his lead over Matt. He's ahead by nearly 2.4 seconds after outsplitting Matt's lap 2 by over 1.5 seconds. The final lap is pretty basic, so here it is at a glance. Both racers hit this first shortcut one way or another, then chain a quick mini turbo to it before hitting the jump boost. Once they are on this platform, they go for the tight hairpin turn and make their way back down before drifting off the zipper ramp. Once on the ground, Matt drifts around this next turn like normal, and Stir ignores it entirely by using his last mushroom. To close out the race, both racers charge up their mini turbos to hit one last tire hop before crossing the finish line. As that happens, we see that Stir put up a time that was 3.6 seconds faster than Matt's former world record. So by hitting the first shortcut with no items and cutting out another large turn for two of the three laps, Stir was able to successfully go under one minute on this course. This comes after putting up 14 previous records where he got ever so closer to this sub and now he's officially under a minute on Mario Circuit. No appearance from Stir today, so we're just gonna have to skip forward again. The best known splits for this run are without a doubt the most impressive ones I've reviewed thus far. Stir owns all three of them, and for the first time in this series, two of which are also the world record splits. The only place he could improve even slightly is on lap 1, and even then it's only 3 frames max that he could knock off. That's less than half a tenth of a second away from the best known sometime. We all thought a high point 0.9 was the absolute limit for this track, but according to the best known sometime, just a little bit more optimization can theoretically make point 0.8 possible on this course, but that's likely up to stir and stir only. The worldwide top 10 consists of 6 national and 3 continental record holders. Stir sits at the top, nearly half a second back is American record holder Grant, and in third place representing Norway is Pi. The 4th and 5th spot belong to Spanish rivals Genzua for admin and Alberto, separated by 4 one thousandths of a second. The next 4 on this board share only 2 one hundredths of a second in separation and include names such as Bry, Army, Mies, and Sarah. And rounding out the top 10, we have the Japanese record holder Storb. When you look at the separation some of these players share, you wonder how Stir was able to put 4 tenths of a second between him and 2nd place. He does have a history of putting up times that remain untouched for lengthy periods of time, and Mario Circuit is no different, so I expect the lone 59 second time to stand as the top time for quite a while. That's the end of episode 64, and the last episode of Lowering the Mark, whose number is a power of 2. I hope you found it interesting, if you did, like and share this video with your friends, and comment on which course you'd like me to analyze next. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.